Hey everybody, and welcome back to Under the Loop with me, Marco Nicolini from Grand Caliber. And as usual, excited to show you a few pieces we have in stock today. Today we're focusing on some gold pieces, uh, and some that are very special, and some that you can find run of the mill in the marketplace, and we'll talk about market prices and so on. The very first watch I wanna dive right into is the very rare and very coveted 1802 Rolex President. As you can see here, there's something very special about this watch that I'm sure you guys can catch, and that is the Tiffany stamp. And another little small detail I'm sure a few, few of you guys may have picked on, it, the fact that this bezel is not fluted like you would normally see, but in fact it is a smooth bezel on a non-quick president, which would make this reference an 1802. So with this watch, you have an 1802 Tiffany stamp with a beautiful cream dial, a little bit more creamy silver, but it's kind of getting that nice cream color to it. Um, just absolutely beautiful. Um, stuff like this is just hard to find. Um, obviously Tiffany stamped, you know, just makes it that much more special. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of Tiffany stamps. I've had them throughout the years and I've never really seen a nice president that really stood out to me for being a Tiffany stamp, but this one really does stand out to me in a lot of ways. Just that smooth bezel gives this watch almost a sportier feel. And then on top of that, the color of the dial matched with that Tiffany stamp just really gives this whole thing a whole different type of vibe that I'm not nor normally used to seeing with the Tiffany stamped um, president because most presidents that I see that are Tiffany stamped are usually quick sets, um, usually ranging from a single quick to a double quick. And they'll typically have a champagne dial. And you know, typical champagne dial Tiffany stamp, it's cool, but it kind of makes you yawn at the end of the day because the watch doesn't really have too much flair going on other than just the stamp. You know, a plain Jane president is a very nice watch, very respectable, but you really want some additional touches. And what's making this watch so magical is just that pie pan dial with that Tiffany stamp really kind of separates the watch from the herd. It kind of has its own category of collectability. If you look down the side of the watch, it just has a really tall crystal. It just almost gives it a sporty feel. And I will say this one is very used. Um, you know, it's been loved, but this is the type of watch I would buy and take the bracelet off and put it on a very nice calf strap of some sort, maybe a tan strap. This really just wants to be mated with a strap versus a bracelet in my opinion. I think it just gives the watch really a truly classic vintage feel overall because it is a very much a vintage watch. This watch is a 2.7 serial, so it would be a 70, I believe it's 1971, 1972 era. So beautiful watch. Obviously it's been polished in the past uh, and the bracelet's pretty well used. I'll show you something. Uh, so if you look at the side of the bracelet, you can kind of see there's a lot of gap between the links. That is very unfortunate because when you hang the watch off the side, that is exactly what it's going to look like. Um, it's not going to stand straight across like you would find on a newer watch. It's gonna be kind of janky. Um, but again, keep the bracelet if you buy this watch, just take it off and put it on a strap. I get that is the nicest way to wear this watch and to really truly appreciate it. Talking about the movement real quick, it is a non-quick. So all that means is if you wanna change the date on this watch, please give yourself 30 minutes or so to have a clear mind of functioning that small task because it is going to be fun. <laughs> if I own this watch, to me, it is a simple time watch. I'm not messing with the day and the date because it really requires you to go every single day through and through. So around the 27th, if you needed to go to the 26th, well, let's, I'll show you guys real quick. So if you go backwards, I think one thing is you can, I think going backwards, if I'm not mistaken, reset. Yeah. So the date stayed the same, but now you changed the day. So if you wanted Wednesday the 27th, you would just simply do that by just rotating this backwards over and over and over. So let's see. So we're so Wednesday and we remain on the 27th, which then if you wanted Thursday the 28th, you would just go forward and, oh, there you go. So, yep, there's a very fun watch to have to set. I particularly don't like that, but you know, you guys out there, um, if you like spending time with a watch, this is a perfect watch to spend time with because setting it is a task. Um, but otherwise, thank you Rolex for, you know, throughout the years, um, would have to say, you know, designing watches to have quick set features is a huge plus. Um, but other than that, very, very respectable watch. Market price on a watch like this is hard to price because they are they are not out there. So uh, I simply priced it as an 1803 Tiffany & Co, which I've seen in the marketplaces from high 20s to low 30s. 
but I've sweetened this up even more and priced it around twenty-three to twenty-four thousand dollars. So you can find it on our website. It's a very beautiful watch and it's super exciting to have. I haven't even had a chance to wear it yet. I do kind of want to take this thing for a weekend spin, see how I enjoy wearing it. I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous and it just crushes it with that smooth bezel. This is the watch to have with a smooth bezel. They do make the double quick, single quicks with smooth bezel, but for whatever reason, they just don't have this appeal that this watch has simply because of that tall crystal that they come with. That is going to be it for the 1802 Tiffany & Co. Absolutely gorgeous watch. Can't say enough good things about this piece. The next watch I have for you guys is one of my personal favorite watches. I've owned this watch in the past. I'm sure you guys have seen me wearing it a couple years back. Uh, and that is going to be the 116518 Paul Newman Daytona Oyster Flex. And I must say this watch has a presence to it. It is absolutely beautiful and it is discontinued. Now you guys might be thinking, well, it's discontinued, but Rolex is still making it. Yes, they are, but it is not quite the same. Go back, pause this video right now, look at this watch and go to Rolex and go look at the current one, the 126518 Oyster Flex Daytona. Tell me what differences you see because it is not quite the same. Uh, so if you took time to look at that difference, you will notice that the bezel is now a ceramic insert as opposed to the ceramic bezel which holds the crystal on. Some other features that I wish they didn't mess with, they have since done away with the red chrono hand. They've done away with the black chrono uh, hands as well. So you have gold hands for the chronos, plain Jane, you know, chronograph hands for the rest of the watch. They kind of beefed up the watch a little bit in some areas. Um, obviously got the upgraded movement, which is exciting for Rolex, you know, especially you modern guys out there that really want to see those changes. You know, you have a 72 hour power reserve movement, which is a chrono, which, you know, as you know, Rolex does things. That's a very complicated process to extend the power reserve on a watch like this, because that means they have to make room in other areas to give it a bigger hairspring or mainspring, excuse me. This to me would be the more classic watch down the road. Probably, you know, imagine this becomes very collectible one day. This is going to prove itself against the modern version, in my opinion, because it has those small details. Remember, those tiniest details now are going to be the biggest details in the future. You know, that's how it is with Rolex. You guys know when you have something very collectible it is always a minute things let's talk about a flat four kermit right this is a watch that on average is five to seven thousand dollars more than its its later production model the 16610 with the regular pointed four insert so those little details will come alive in this watch it'll be the red-handed paul newman oyster flex versus the non-red-handed oyster flex it'll be something along those lines or of course, remember that ceramic bezel right now holds everything together on this watch, holds a crystal onto the case. Now it's just an insert. So they've upgraded that. So kind of like this watch, if it was a 6263, it would look like the modern bezel now, but it's a 6265. So um, that's your wrist check for this video, by the way. <laughs> so there you have it. That's the 116518. Very, very beautiful watch. I miss this watch if um, I can't, you know what? Here's one thing I'm gonna say. If I do get another one of these, what I wanna do is get rid of this Oyster Flex strap and actually put it on a black roughed up suede strap that kind of has a rougher texture to it, utilizing this strap. I think that would be a stunning look. Tell me in the comments below what kind of strap you'd put on this and hopefully you don't say leather alligator because they did, they did away with that. So that would be the uh, previous 116518 that is mid discontinued. That would be the same very watch that this is except with a steel bezel, excuse me, with a precious metal bezel and a leather strap um, and the older buckle which had the holes on the side and this one doesn't. So there you have it, 116518. And while we're on the topic of Oyster Flex watches, that's going to lead me into the next watch. The 326235, did I say that right? 326235. So I always have to jog my memory on that watch. Uh, and that is going to be this watch, the Chocolate Rose Gold Oyster Flex Sky Dweller. This watch right here always gets all the craze at is, as it is a gorgeous watch to see in person. It is a lot of watch to see in person. Now for those of you know who've seen these watches and don't really necessarily like the weight of the solid bracelet model, they can go opt for this option, which is the same watch, but with the Oyster Flex. And this watch right here really is probably one of the most complicated watches Rolex make. It's probably is, it is the most complicated uh, watch they make as this is a, oh, essentially a annual calendar movement. You do have the month date and the, you have a month indicator, which is um, 
indicated by that red dot. If you can see it at the 12, that is saying the watch is in December. You have the date, you have the GMT function, and obviously have the time and so forth. It is a very interesting watch to operate as it operates utilizing a bezel that turns into different positions. So it turns three times, that's two, and that's one. Now in the first position of this watch, if you ever have one, you would know that if you just pull the crown and wind it, that's all you have. If you pull it out, you have no function. This crown does absolutely nothing in the very first position. I don't know why Rolex did that. I always found that very weird. It is kind of just like a blank spot for the movement. Um, and I get a lot of calls selling these to people that have bought one for the first time. And I always get that phone call like, hey, the watch is broken. I pulled the crown out and it's not doing anything. Well, my response is, are you in the first position on the bezel? And they're like, well, I don't even know what that means. Like, well, twist your bezel. And they're like, oh, I didn't even know it turns. <laughs> so long story short, when you go to the second position, that's gonna give you wind and date, which goes back and forth. That's a fantastic feature. Um, obviously we love that very much. And then the second position, or actually should be considered the third, is your jumping hour, kind of like your GMT function. And then when you go one more, you then get your uh, time change and your GMT hour is now moving with everything. So it's very beautiful watch. Obviously that chocolate rose gold is the ultimate version of this watch. Besides the crazy custom one-off diamond pieces Rolex does with these, you guys have seen it. You guys have seen Drake wearing those crazy uh, meteorite sky dweller on oyster flex and i believe he has one as well on the bracelet which is a million dollar plus watch oyster flex version and i think is around 650 700 the price point of this watch is around 40 to 42 thousand in this current market these were at one point trading for nearly fifty thousand dollars for the oyster flex variant and 70 eighty thousand dollars for the uh, oyster variant with the solid rose gold case and bracelet so there you have it that is the oyster flex sky dweller very beautiful watch very fun watch to wear summer's coming up so these are my summertime oyster flex watches guys i've got another summertime watch to show you that i think is just an absolute stunner and that is going to be pause what the hell model number is this panerai what <laughs> And my next final summertime watch that's kind of fun to wear is the Panerai 974 uh, that has now been discontinued. And I'll tell you a quick fun fact about this watch. Um, they have done away with the clear back. Uh, the movement on this is kind of crazy. It's a triple X IV. I guess that's a 34. Very, very interesting watch. Solid gold, uh, ceramic bezel. You know, it kind of has all the, you know, has all the fun points to it that are, you know, sought after in a watch like this. Kind of gives you the same vibe as a, almost gives you, well, to be honest, Panerai has its own vibe. It's a crazy, crazy fun watch to wear. Uh, you know, you have this beautiful protruding crown guard right there that really just make, brings this watch to a different pedigree than you're used to seeing. You know, you have that 60 click bezel. Yeah, just listen to that, That's, that is loud. Yeah, so very fun watch to wear. Panerai uh, is something that I was definitely heavily into for a while, back when I first started selling watches. Very much into the one and two and the three series. You know, the Panerai 111, the Panerai 114s, the 275s, the 279s, you know, the equations of time, stuff like that. They do make a lot of beautiful, awesome, unique watches. I'm very surprised this brand isn't more recognized. I know Jimmy is now switching full-time to Panerai starting May 1st, so he claims. Uh, so good luck on that venture. I hope it pays off for you. It's a decently sized watch. This isn't like most Panerai guys. This isn't a watch that wears very large. It's a 42 millimeter at the end of the day, and it takes a beating. It is shock resistant, so you could feel good about throwing this watch around and not really having to worry about it, other than the fact that it's rose gold, so it is a little softer on the case. But other than that, and that's going to wrap it up for these for this Panerai 974, um, and it's going to wrap up this segment for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and like always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for me, and let me know in the comments what you guys thought of these watches. If there's any questions you might have about them, ping me and let me know. I hope you guys have a great day, and that's going to be it. Thank you.